Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are hiding in the hold of a space freighter that's flying stolen cargo well within the orbit of Mercury. Where's all that heat coming from? Stifling. The cooling system is broken down. Hey, well, we're going to take over and change course uh, before we suffocate. The worst danger is in the next compartment. Look at the rockets. Those chemicals. Right. They get a few degrees hotter, they'll blow the ship to atoms. <laughs> Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5, bound for the planet Mercury. They're trying to discover why cargoes of valuable materials have been mysteriously vanishing from spaceports on the inner planets. Thus far, careful undercover work by space patrol agents has failed to uncover anyone responsible for the theft, or even to disclose the method of operation. And so, Buzz personally is taking over the investigation. 3,000 years out of Mercury, sir. We'll hit the estimated time of arrival right in the nose. ETA 0830, right? Right, yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Nice bit of investigating, Happy. Mm-hmm. We'll have time to change uniforms at Space Patrol headquarters in Mercury City and be in Roger Claflin's office by 9. Well, Commander, do you think Mr. Claflin will be able to give us any leads on these thefts? I don't know. If we're going to stop these attacks on space shipping, we'll have to check everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, uh, Claflin's the one that filed that hot complaint with the Secretary General, isn't he? Yes, and he's very important. Clapper not only heads one of the biggest interplanet space lines, he's president of the Space Transit Association. We need his full cooperation if we're going to get to the bottom of this situation. Well, what about that other person you wanted to see, uh, Jason Cutler? He's one of the most recent victims, Hap. I'm going to talk to him because he's not a member of the association. I want the small independent outfits to know that the Space Patrol is just as anxious to protect their interests as well as the big firms. Yes, sir. Besides, there's another reason for these visits. We're just sure to get out to the men behind these robberies if the Space Patrol is out to get them. Yeah, maybe pop out of their holes and tip their hands. Uh-huh. Better contact Mercury City Space Control, huh? Yes, sir. Meantime, on Mercury, in the private office of the president of Tri-Orbit Space Lines, Jason Cutler looks up from his desk as his assistant, Rock Van Dorn, enters. I've located Pentis, Mr. Cutler. He's on his way up. Good. The Marvelite will be in cargo ship M-231, ready to blast off. But it's risky sending Pendis out again. I think he's got heliophobia. Too many trips close to the sun. The last I talked to him, he seemed all right. Besides, he's the ideal man for this trip. He'll fly closer to the sun than any pilot we've got. Well, I'm not arguing, boss. But after all, there is a space patrol regulation on transsolar flights. And it's just that regulation that makes it possible for us to carry on this uh, special commerce. Our ships take vectors that keep them clear of any embarrassing questions by the Space Patrol. Well, still there must be a reason for that rule. Now the Space Patrol is overcautious. Stop worrying. Corey's been made aware of the fact that our legitimate flights obey the rules to the letter. (laughs) After all, I did suspend two pilots for six months for a minor violation of the regulation. Oh, yes. It was a smart move, Mr. Cutler. Of course, but not as smart as my reporting that Tri-Orbit have been victims of space pirates. Oh, that will be Prentice now. Mm, show him in. And remember, not even Prentice is to know that he'll be carrying Marvelite on this run. All right. Uh, come in, Prentice. Mr. Cutler is waiting. Thanks, Randor. Thanks. Well, well, Prentice. How's our ace pilot today? Very good, Mr. Cutler. Hey, uh, you mind if I sit down? Oh, no, not at all. Have a chair. <sighs> Got a job for you, Prentice. Another special run. You better give it to one of the other boys, Mr. Cutler. You're the only one I can trust with this job, Prentice. It's got to be done immediately. I'm not interested. Now, see here, Prentice, I'm not in the habit of begging pilots to work for me. And I don't need to remind you that you'll find it very difficult to get a job with another space line. Understand? Yeah, I understand. I'll take your Marvelite to Venus. Who said anything about Marvelite? It is Marvelite, isn't it? Then do it. Did you spell anything? They didn't tell me anything. I know it's Marvelite. But I said I'd go. Now, do you want me to haul the stuff or don't you? Hey, Van Dorn, we'll see you at the spaceport 1,100 hours to give you final instructions. Okay, can I leave now? Yes, that's all, Prentice. Good. I don't want to be around when your visitors arrive. What visitors? Why, uh, well, an important man like you is sure to have a lot of appointments. I'll be looking for you, Van Dorn. Sure, Prentice, Sure. 
How did he know he'd be hauling marvelite? Mm, just a lucky guess. What else could it be? There is something strange about Prentiss. Maybe he does need a rest. By the way, Van Dorn, do I have any appointments this morning? No, Mr. Cutler. Uh, remember, you asked me to keep the morning clear for correspondence. Yes, yes, that's right. Oh, take that call, will you? I'm not into anybody. Yes, sir. Mr. Cutler's office. Van Dorn speaking. Who? Oh, I see. Uh, one moment, please. Mr. Cutler. Yes, what is it? It's Commander Corey. Corey? Yes, he wants to know if you can give him a few minutes this morning. Oh. Uh, tell him yes. I tell you, Commander, it's a disgusting situation when honest businessmen are forced to endure raids of these, these pirates. I agree with you, Mr. Cutler. That's why I'm here. I've already talked to Mr. Kaplan, and he's promised cooperation both for himself and the association. Well, you can certainly count on mine. Although I don't suppose a small concern like Tri Orbit counts for much. On the contrary, Mr. Cutler, where the Space Patrol is concerned, your company is just as important as the biggest space line in the solar system. It's our job to protect everybody. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Commander. Now, what can I do to help your investigation? If you can keep the Space Patrol informed of your schedules as much in advance as possible, we can protect your ships and cargoes better. Well, naturally, this information will be regarded as confidential, particularly where your competitors are concerned. Well, you can count on Tri Orbit to keep you completely informed, Commander. Oh, Mr. Cudler, I... Yes? Miss Van Dorn, what is it? Oh, uh, excuse me. I didn't know you were busy. Oh, I'm just leaving. Thank you, Mr. Cutler. Oh, you're welcome, Commander. Uh, nice of you to drop in. Goodbye. All right, Van Dorn, what's the trouble? It's Prentice. Didn't he blast off? Yes, but something is wrong. Our dispatcher picked up Prentice on the spacephone. He was rambling, almost incoherent. He said something about a forced landing. Where? I don't know. Prentice got out before the dispatcher could get his position, but he wasn't far out of Mercury. We had to send a ship to search for him. No, no. If Prentice is in a jam, it's his problem. There's nothing about that ship that can involve triorbit. Yes, but suppose the space patrol will find him. Uh, Prentice is sick. He may talk too much. Mm. That's all right. Well, here's what we'll do. You and I will blast off and keep listening to our private space phone channel. If we hear Prentice, we'll take care of him before the space patrol gets there. An hour later, with their business completed on Mercury City, Buzz and Happy are in the Terra 5, headed for Zarador, a smaller city on the other side of Mercury. Below them lies the barren, sun-cracked surface on the great Mercury wasteland. Emergency Prentice to station K-34. Turn that up, Happy. Sounds like a distress call. Yes, sir. But it isn't on the regular emergency chair. Forced landing. Mercury wastelands. Need help immediately. Uh-oh. Some poor guy's really in a jam. Why doesn't he use the space patrol emergency channel? Coordinates follow. North, 18 degrees, 30 minutes. West, 153 degrees, 9... Uh, correction. 151 degrees, and, and... He cut off, sir. Did you get those coordinates, Happy? Yes, sir. Oh, he gave. He really sounded as though he were in bad shape. If he's down on the hot side of Mercury, we'd better find him. Even a good spacesuit wouldn't protect a man for long in this heat. I'll cut on the viewscope, sir. We shouldn't have much trouble spotting his ship, even if we don't know his exact position. Very badly damaged. He must be still in the ship, sir. That would be his best chance. Get our spacesuits out of the locker, Happy, while I set the ship down. Yes, sir. Better bring a spare in case this fellow's suit is defective. A few moments later, the Terra 5 lands near the damaged ship, and Buzz and Happy emerge from the hatch in their heavily inflated spacesuits. Carefully, they make their way across the deep fissures on the rocky surface of the planet. He said his name was Prentice, didn't he? Yes, sir. Commander Corey calling Prentice aboard wrecked cargo ship. We're about to open the outer hatch. Prentice, can you hear me? Prentice to Commander Corey. Okay to come aboard. Up the ladder, Happy. All right, secure it behind us before we open the inner hatch. No use taking chances. No, it must be on 500 degrees Fahrenheit here. Ship. 
That won't be necessary, Commander. Hey, what's the idea? I'm sure you won't force me to use this blast gun. Because what are you planning to do, Prentice? Lock you two in this compartment, then leave for Mercury City in your ship. And just how far do you think you'll get in a stolen space patrol ship? Far enough to save my life, at least. This ship will be destroyed in nine minutes. And who's going to destroy it? You? I won't have to bother. A former friend of mine is going to blast it, thinking I'm in it. Well, gentlemen, you have approximately nine minutes to live. Goodbye, and thank you. Mars and Happy landed their spaceship in the torrid wastelands of the planet Mercury, answering a distress call from a wrecked cargo ship. When they boarded the ship in their spacesuits, the stranded pilot, Prentice, locked them in a compartment. After informing Buzz and Happy that the cargo ship would be destroyed in approximately nine minutes, Prentice left, blasting off in the Terra 5. Now the two space patrollers are vainly trying to batter their way out of the locked compartment. Oh, it's no use, Commander. And maybe Prentice was lying when he said the ship would be blown up in nine minutes. I'll bet he just wanted to get a head start. I gather that he meant we'd be blown up anyway. That's right. Say, what's he up to? Why didn't he just let us rescue him? Either this ship is stolen or the cargo is. Then he's one of the space pirates we're after. Looks like it. He sure fooled us with that phony weakness. He wasn't entirely pretending, Happy. Prentice is a sick man. I didn't have much of a chance for a diagnosis, but he seemed to have an acute case of heliophobia. What? It's a type of fever that can result only from flights close to the sun. I'd say Prentice has made many flights closer than a half million DU limit. Well, why would anyone want to fly closer than that? Only if they were more afraid of the space patrol than of harmful radiation. Now, let's take another crack at that door. <laughs> In a private space cruiser high over the surface of Mercury, two men watch a viewscope screen as an automatic scanning device laces back and forth over the planet below. Hold it, Don. Oh, I saw it too, Mr. Cutler. Well, what do you think? That's been a ship, all right? Yes. And there are no other ships around, either on the ground or spaceborne. Now is our chance, Mr. Cutler. Now, wait a minute. Why blast a valuable cargo like that? But isn't that why we came out here? To keep the space patrol from finding Prentice and picking up evidence from the ship? Yes, but it's obvious the space patrol didn't hear Prentice. My guess is that Prentice is in no condition to tell anybody anything ever. And then we can recover the Marvelite. Why not? We'll land now and make sure about Prentice. Then we'll have another cargo ship come out here and transfer the Marvelite. In the grounded cargo ship, Buzz and Happy futilely try to break out of the compartment, but the door holds firmly. Oh, this is a waste of effort, Happy. We can't smash our way out of this. No, sir. And it's sure been longer than nine minutes. Commander, did you hear that? Yes. Sounds as though someone entered the ship. Do you suppose it's Prentice coming back? I hardly think so. Be ready for anything. We don't know who's out there. We'll make a thorough check of the ship, Van Dort. Mr. Cutler. Oh. Why, uh... Surely you didn't send that space phone call we heard. Oh, that's why you're here. You heard it, too. Yes, something about a wreck. Van Dorn and I had just blasted off for Venus when we picked it up by accident. Uh, the, the fellow sounded sick or something. He wasn't as sick as he seemed. He forced Cadet Happy and me in here at the point of a blast gun and stole our ship. Uh, nervy devil. I'll be glad to take you back to Mercury City, Commander. I'll take you up on that. First, I want to examine this ship and see what's aboard. While Buzz and Happy search the cargo ship, Jason Cutler and Rock Van Dorn play a cautious game, watching carefully, but showing no concern or undue curiosity. But on the return trip to Mercury City, after Buzz has reported the misadventure to the Space Patrol by spacephone, Cutler looks up from the controls of his private crew. And those cases of Marvelite you found on this ship, uh, of course they're stolen, there's no doubt about it. Well, at least that's one shipment of stolen goods that'll be returned to its rightful owners. Mercury City Space Control calling Commander Corey aboard Private Cruiser MP-332. Mercury City Space Control to Commander Corey. Corey, Ham, go ahead, Space Control. Commander, we've recovered your spaceship. Good. How about this fellow Prentice? There was no one in the ship, sir. It was abandoned 100 miles east of Mercury City in the mountains. One of our patrol units was tipped off by an anonymous space phone message. Probably from Prentice. What are your instructions regarding your ship, Commander? Fly to Mercury City. I'll arrive there in 20 minutes. Corey out. Well, that's a break. 
Looks like Prentice was able to contact a pal who picked him up after he landed Terra 5. Yeah, but why did he bother to tip off space control? It would keep us from organizing a large-scale search for the ship. It sort of looks like Prentice is anxious not to antagonize us too much. Well, if he thinks we're going to regard his actions as playful pranks, Mr. Prentice is seriously mistaken. Later, in the space patrol office at Mercury City headquarters, Buzz pours over files and reports and then turns to Cadet Happy. Here, Happy. Here's the name of a man we're going to watch. Jason Cutler. I've talked to his ex-partner, Grayson, who founded Tri-Orbit Space Lines. He told me that Cutler insisted on hiring a pilot named Prentice, who had a bad record with several space lines. Oh, and you think it's the same man that stole our ship? And Prentice seemed positive that another ship would show up in less than ten minutes. The only ship that did show up was Cutler's. Still, if Cutler was behind these robberies, well, he could have easily finished us out there in that wreck. He may have thought we had notified Space Patrol. I've got a plan that'll either prove my suspicions about Cutler or clear him completely. What's that, sir? Well, there's a cargo ship at the Mercury Spaceport that's owned by Cutler. Yet he hasn't listed it in his official report. If he uses it to transport stolen goods, we'll have him. What do we do? Have the ship followed? Well, the patrol ship might be detected. Now, my plan is to sneak aboard that ship. There are plenty of places to hide. What about Prentice? Unless I'm completely mistaken, he'll be needing medical attention before long. Every doctor in the solar system has instructions to report cases of heliophobia. Well, how does heliophobia affect a person, Commander? Now, usually there's a loss of weight and an inability to coordinate. There's some other effects that the doctors don't fully understand. One temporary and harmless effect seems to increase some mental powers. One thing's certain, harmful radiations penetrate the hull of any spaceship flying closer than half a million DUs to the sun. Well, I wouldn't get that close for any amount of money. You might end up doing it for a cadet's pay, Happy. Let's get to the spaceport and get aboard that cargo ship. Van Dorn, there's no use worrying. Why should Corey suspect us? Oh, we should have finished him out in the waste and blow up the ship as we originally planned. Even if a space patrol ship didn't catch us, Prentice would know who did it. And I don't want him to have any hold over me. Very uh, sound reasoning, Mr. Cutler. Prentice? You fool. Why did you come here? Don't you know the whole space patrol is looking for you? Yes, I know it. And I know something else you don't know. All right, Prentice, out with it. Right now, Corey and the cadet are aboard cargo ship MC-793 at the spaceport. They're hiding in compartment D. How do you know that? Never mind how I know. But I'm the only one that can get us all out of this mess. Just let me blast that ship off toward the sun. When I'm inside the danger zone, you can join airlocks and take me off in your ship. Corey and the cargo ship will be destroyed. Suppose he grabs you before we can pick you up. I tell you, I know what's in Corey's mind. He plans to wait till the ship reaches its destination. How can you possibly know what's in Corey's mind? I knew you planned to blow up the wreck with me in it, out there in the wastelands. And I knew the instant you changed your mind when you figured you could save the Marvelite... The radiation. That's what's doing it, Mr. Cutler. It's one of the effects of the heliophobia. The radiations have made Prentice's mind super sensitive to the thoughts of the others. What difference does it make how I do it? All right, Prentice, it's worth a trial. Get to that cargo ship. Concealed in compartment D of the cargo ship, Buzz and Happy are suddenly subjected to the blast-off acceleration. As the moments drag on, the space patrollers converse in low tones. Then each becomes aware of a strange nervousness, combined with a feeling of weakness. Got to keep under control, Hap. We're being bombarded by solar radiation right through the ship's hull. Smoke the rockets, you mean we're inside the half million DU limit? Yes. We've got a mild touch of heliophobia. The pilot is getting just as big a dose of radiation as we are. Cutler here. I'm inside the danger zone, and there's no other ship in sight. Come and get me. Cutler, did you hear me? Cutler, hurry, I'm in trouble. I'm sick. I, I can't stay conscious much longer. Can't control the ship. I'm blacking out. Cutler, hurry. Prentice. Prentice. Well, this is working out fine. In case you can hear me, Prentice, you're no longer of any use to me as a pilot. And with this power of being able to read my thoughts, well, that is a definite disadvantage to me. Van Dorn and I are returning to Mercury. Bon voyage, Prentice. Commander, where's that heat coming from? It's stifling it. The refrigeration system is broken down. We'd better take over and change course before we suffocate. The worst danger is in the cargo hold. Smoke and rockets. Those chemicals. Right. 
If they get a few degrees hotter, they'll blow the ship to atoms. The pilot must be crazy. He's heading right for the sun. Let's jump him now. Oh, we've still got the strength. Wow. It's even hotter in the corridor. The cooling system must be out all over the ship. Hurry, happy. To the control compartment. Commander, the pilot's on the floor. He's blacked out. Smoking rockets. It's Prentice. We've got to jettison those chemicals. I'll take the controls and change vector while you press the cargo hatch release. Yes, sir. Cargo jettison, Commander. Oh. Commander, oh. Prentice is coming, too. Take care of him, Happy. He looks like he's in a bad way. Cutler, you promised. Hear yeah, that, sir? He's talking about Cutler. Cutler, help me. Come and get me. Take me off the ship. Relax, Prentice. You don't need Cutler. We'll take care of you and Cutler. No report yet, Mr. Cutler. Either on the cargo ship or on Commander Corey being missing. There may never be a report on the ship, Van Doyle. When we turned back for Mercury, Prentice had that ship headed right for the sun. And then uh, we've got nothing to worry about. Not a thing. All right, Cutler. It's Corey. Out the other door. Get Van Dorn, Happy. Wait. <laughs> 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 Now, well, let's have no more nonsense, Cutler. Yeah. And it goes for you, too, Van Dorn. Cutler planned the whole thing. He forced me to help him. Are oh, you cowardly rat? Right? Just take it easy, Cutler. We got the whole story from Prentice. Prentice? Yes, he's alive. It's going to be all right, in spite of that heavy dose of solar radiation. Van Dorn, I was a fool to listen to you. All this rubbish about radiation making Prentice able to read minds. It's not true, is it? The doctors are going to make some tests. Well, they're wasting their time. Mind reading, what nonsense. Well, maybe, but I can tell you this, Cutler. You can just forget about making a lunge for your desk. Huh? But... Before you got your hands on that ray gun in the second drawer, you'd be flat on your back with a sore jaw. But, but, how did you know about that gun? Why, uh, smoke and rockets, Commander. I'm a mind reader. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol story. Buzz and Happy have discovered a strange castle in a valley on the planet Mars. Curiously, they make their way down a long corridor. This place has the weirdest lighting, sir. Yes, it seems to come from the walls and ceiling as if the surface were glowing. I wonder where this corridor leads. It seems to go on forever. Trick of perspective, Happy. Hey, what happened? I, I can't walk. Look at the floor, it's getting transparent. Smoke a rocket. It's disappearing. They're right from under us. Hey, come on, we're falling. Join us again next week for another thrilling adventure with Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> Space Patrol comes to you each week at this time through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.